House Council Minow. Thank you very much, Council President. I appreciate the, um, the efforts of Councilman Bass and uh, all the, uh, the members. I think uh, many times uh, people think we have an easy job until moments like this. We have to vote on some tough issues, and there's no hiding what you're going to do. Um, I do want to say that I felt very sorry that uh, Councilman Bass has uh, experienced some personal attacks. Uh, I think we all have, and we all uh, understand what it is to be attacked personally for ideas that we believe in, things that we try to do for the good of our community. But at the end of the day, it gets resolved right here with a vote that's out in the open. Um, on my part, I understand all the issues that were raised. I understand that the issues run deeper than the bulletproof glass. Um, and, that is, um, and that is from uh, heartfelt and frustrated citizens on both sides of this issue. The only issue, however, for me uh, in this bill that I disagree with and feel that strongly about is the language that authorizes the LNI Commissioner to promulgate regulations for the use or removal of safety glass before January 1st, 2021. That language to me, if that is not an important part of this bill, I would request be removed, but we have a difference of opinion. There are businesses that are nuisance businesses and they don't have plexiglass. And they continue to be nuisance businesses and they should be closed. There are businesses that are not nuisance businesses and they have plexiglass and they should continue not to deter from complying with the law. I support Councilman Bass's efforts, therefore, although I was not sure about its implementation, and I'm not still sure, but I voted for her nuisance business law with the hope and desire that Councilman Bass and all of us could work to ensure that there was due process. That unprecedented bill gives the city the power it never had before, and it is still unfolding right now. Three strikes and you are out. Three strikes. It could be loitering, it could be urination, it could be trash. Three strikes with no effort to work with the police and the community, you lose your business license. It doesn't matter what kind of business you are. And I voted for Councilman Bass's bill, and there was no complaint from the community, this community. And then, as State Representative Rab pointed to, and State Senator Sharif Street alluded to in testimony, the state signed into uh, the state uh, promulgated a law unprecedented that the governor signed just a few weeks ago with Mayor Kenny and Council President, many of the members here, almost every state rep, state senator, and Congressman Dwight Evans, perhaps others, and that again gave unprecedented power to the city indirectly to contact the state and suspend immediately a business that was licensed to sell alcohol that was in violation. And here a third bill is presented, and I, don't, I have not heard anyone speak against it except for one portion, and that is taking down safe, safety glass. The people who have testified has tef testified about their life and their safety. If we pass this bill, and LNI does, maybe they won't, but so far, at least in sworn testimony, or at least testimony, it's not sworn, here in a hearing, the LNI commissioner said unequivocally that any restaurant, 30 seats or more, that sold alcohol, that had plexiglass or safety glass was in violation of the zoning code, he would require that they take it down. If we take down the safety glass, they're not changing their business model. They're not moving. What they will do is purchase firearms. 
I think that is a worse situation than what we have today. If they're in violation, if they're... If they're in violation, if they're not in compliance, then they should be shut down. And they have supported these laws. But the reason they're here today is because they're concerned for their life, their loved ones, their customers, and their stores. I have no problems supporting anything that has to do with compliance, closing businesses. Uh, if there are 27 stop and goes in Council Bass's district that are in violation and close them all. If they're not in violation, then we cannot close them. But what I would say is taking down a safety measure that is purely defensive to me um, would increase crime. I think about the fact that the store owners who don't have safety glass are typically armed in these types of businesses. They don't all have safety glass. The ones who have safety glass are not armed. But they, are, they put their faith in the safety glass. If you take it down, they may be armed. And I think it's a dangerous thing to have a frightened person with a firearm. What I would consider uh, in this situation is to what extent people are angry and frustrated, even rightfully so. But I would not expose anyone to harm of body or life. Even if they're a nuisance business, we need to be about shutting them down, getting them to compliance, closing them. But I would not expose them or anyone else to the risk that they would be killed or someone who kills someone else. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Council President, thank you very much. To my colleagues and to the folks that are here today on both sides of the issue, this is a gut-wrenching decision. When it comes to personal safety, I'm very much for personal safety. We all need it. We want it. We desire it. It's a human right. But to be very blunt about it, when you're on a store where people are drunk already but are not paying attention to rules and regulations that already exist, and in some cases, thumb their nose at the whole procedures. The fact that the Committee on Health, Public Health that I serve on, along with colleagues led by Councilwoman Bass, spent a considerable amount of time on this very issue. After reaching that agreement, the fact is it's a different bill. Scare tactics have been used and said the glass is coming out. Well, when you really look at the language, it's continued use or removal. So I think both sides of the issue can discuss this further. So after much deliberation, going out into the field itself, talking to store owners, talking to neighborhood representatives, I join Councilwoman Bass in voting aye for this bill. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Don. Thank you, uh, Council President. Welcome. I want to thank Councilwoman Bass for bringing this issue to light because it is a problem. And for those of out there attempting to spin this issue to undermine Councilwoman Bass or make an attack on her character, it is wrong and unacceptable, and no one should tolerate that. And I am sorry that that's happening. The word deli is an abbreviation from the word delicatessen. And I should know that because I own a delicatessen called Schlesinger's. And we don't have any alcohol in this delicatessen, okay, or deli. We have food. We have corned beef. We have pastrami. We have turkey specials and latkes right now. But this week on Tuesday, I took a tour of five of the stop and goes in this area, 2200 North Broad. And they're all called delis, by the way. 
2856 North 22nd, 2708 West Allegheny, 4523 Wayne and 4900 Wayne. And I didn't see any delicatessen that I'm familiar with in those locations. What I did see were selling of alcohol, and it's like liquor stores. And many of them are violating the laws. In fact, the last one I went to barely had a menu to order food from. I went into each one of them and asked for food. I'm in favor of this bill, but my issue is one paragraph, and that is number G. But I am in favor of the bill, but not with paragraph G in there. I wanted to share with you my thoughts on this, because I will be voting no, only because of paragraph G. Everything else, I'm 100% against. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman. Councilman, I'm going to call the other two members first, okay? And they get to. Um, Chair recognize Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to thank Councilman Bass for her work on this legislation. I want to thank Councilman Blackwell for her years of work on this legislation. Um, as we were in the Public Health and Human Services Committee, um, there was a very uh, rigorous and robust debate regarding the public safety issue contained in this legislation uh, and the compromise that we worked together on dealt with an opportunity to have a conversation going forward to address the public safety concerns that business owners have but at the same point use this new tool that was passed in the general assembly to really address some of the nuisance businesses in our communities. And I think the unfortunate aspect of some aspects of this debate that we're losing the opportunity to discuss and use the process of using the regulation as a way to address both sides. One thing that has not been stated in this conversation as we were coming up with this compromise, we talked about other jurisdictions that have protective glass around a cash register or a cash area of the business as well as having an open area where food is served. So I think there is an opportunity here to discuss this issue through the regulatory process of drafting regulations to come up with a process that addresses the public safety concerns, which are real concerns. However, the issues that Councilman Bass has raised and others in this body have raised and people in this community in the communities throughout Philadelphia have raised over the years is also very important. So although I've raised this issue and I know other members have raised this issue, I'll be supporting this legislation, but just because I'm supporting this legislation does not mean I'm not ignorant of the fact of the public safety concerns, and I think all the members of this body, as well as others, I've had numerous conversations with the administration and how we work together on the regulations to address the public safety concerns on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, am compelled to, to speak out uh, in favor of this bill and state clearly why. Councilwoman Bass very thoughtfully and cautiously and carefully gave us context. This is not a five-year-old problem. This is not a 10-year-old issue. It's a 25-year-old community issue. And we live in a world where it's not a perfect world. This is not a perfect bill. She has stipulated that. The good news is that L and I will be the next arbiter, if you will, police officer, if you, if you will, that will have an enormous responsibility to speak to the number one, number two, number three issue, the issue of safety. Councilwoman Bass laid out very, very carefully that the frequency and the high volume of these type of establishments in underserved, disenfranchised communities is unacceptable. This is a fix towards or a remedy towards that reality. But I am, I'm actually encouraged and lifted by the passion by which she has approached this issue. It's people who look like me and, and other poor residents of our communities who ultimately get the downside of what this bill signifies. So kudos to Councilwoman Bass and thank you to Councilwoman Blackwell for setting the stage for an issue that today needs to be dealt with head on. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Keona Sanchez.
Thank you, Mr. President. I too feel compelled to add my voice to this. And I want to thank Councilwoman Bass, and in particular, for her willingness to work along the different members of the committee to get to a place where we could put forth an amendment that would help us establish a process. And let's talk about process, because it's hugely important. Today's vote is not the end, but it should really be a continuation of a conversation about how the city of Philadelphia views our small businesses, our ethnic small businesses, and how it addresses public safety and, and racial issues in our neighborhoods. Let me say for the record that I think it is hugely important that the city, and in particular the Department of Commerce, and as Chair of LNI, the Department of License and Ex Inspections, for us to move the conversation about what we don't want and to move the conversation about what we need. We need an agenda for small businesses that is thoughtful, forthright, and helps businesses and pro by providing them technical assistance as these business models that we're all against change and evolve with our communities. We need to be clear about incentives for businesses around public safety, physical location, signage, all of the things we debate in this council floor all the time. And more importantly, let us not waste this opportunity to use our Human Relations Commissions and others to have the deep-rooted conversations that have been amplified through this debate. So I want to thank Councilwoman Bass, Councilwoman Gim, and others who have come forward and say this is not the end of a conversation, but a commitment for us to work forward in all neighborhoods about businesses and how we promote better relationships. I'm ready for that challenge, and I look forward to working with everyone on both sides of this issue to reach that goal. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognize Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I really got a flashback when uh, Councilwoman Bass read that agreement. Because I kind of remember in another life being at the Philadelphia Commercial Development Corporation with Wilson Good on 60th Street talking about these issues when uh, Councilwoman Blackwell brought it up. Um, that is not the compelling reason why I will be supporting you today. I have, um, other than council duties, so every now and then I get called on to be a pop-pop. And my job is to take my granddaughter through from my district to uh, mathematics and science on Broad Street. And in this particular time, one of my responsibilities was to get her lunch. I went in store after store, deli after deli, and could not find a wholesome meal for my granddaughter. What I did see was hood wraps right next to the M&Ms. What I did see was a dangerous environment where people who should have been on their way to work were on their way to a, get a drink. My granddaughter, everyone's granddaughter here, deserves better than that. That we deserve what is thing called customer service. Um, and that when you make a bet or a wager or a guess, when you walk out of your door, what will you find first? A, a vegetable or fruit, a book or a gun. You're more than likely in many zip codes to find the gun. What we have to do is raise our standards. And raise our standards because we deserve it. Raise our standards, also, and keep those business partners safe. But you do that by not building walls. You do that by building bridges to the community. Whether you're at 60th and Market in my district or K&A, you see the same kind of things happening. Thank you, Councilwoman Bass, for forcing us to take a hard look at a business model. Final thing is what Councilwoman Sanchez says. Do not let this be a missed opportunity to come to the table to build a better model because that's what we should be the next step. We should not be on our way to the gun store. We should be on our way to the negotiation tables to figure this thing out. So I will be supporting 
uh, Councilwoman Bay. Thank you, Councilman. The chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, number one, I wanted to thank all of my colleagues, and I want to thank them for those who are supporting and not supporting the bill for, you know, coming to my aid uh, regarding, you know, any personal attacks. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a North Philly girl, so I'm, I'm good. I'm not even I, – I, I know who I am, so, you know, you can say what you want to say. But I do want to say to my friend David O that – you can't say that you're sorry for the attacks that I have and at the same time give misinformation. Because one of the things that was stated today was that LNI Commissioner David Perry, who's an excellent commissioner, said he'd remove plexiglass. And, and we had this conversation yesterday. That statement was made before the compromise. So we have to put out the correct information at all times. When we know better, we have to do better. And we have a responsibility as members of council for making sure that the information that's presented is correct. So I just wanted to say that, um, that going forward, we need to you know, stop quoting previous comments that were made before the compromise, before the bill was amended. Because obviously, what was said before Cha has changed based on the new legislation. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman o. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Councilman Bass. And um, let me say that I, too, have a perspective, perhaps a different one. When we had the hearing, almost 150 citizens were turned away, members of the Asian American community. They could not get in the door. They were left outside in the cold, senior citizens and children. They were told they could not sign in. They were told the room was full. They were told they couldn't come up the steps. We didn't know what to do with them. And so we prepare, prepared today. When they were up in the balconies, they were told you couldn't show your signs. And when they were at the hearing, they have limited English. And there was an hour break and this uh, group of business people was hoping for amendment. The amendment would be to take out the language that would force them to remove their safety glass. And what happened was the council committee came back and announced an amendment and they all applauded. What they didn't know was that the council committee, the amendment changed the wording but kept the content. The content is the same. And whatever conversation the LNI commissioner had with anyone, it certainly wasn't public, it wasn't recorded, and I didn't hear it. What I do have is his transcript, where he said very clearly that no restaurant with 30 seats or more should have safety glass, and that he would take it out, and beyond that, it's a violation of the zoning code. So I'm pretty sure he intends to take it out. That may change. That may change. But what I would say is whether you say the number 10 or you say 5 plus 5, it's the same thing. And to me, what was done was language change, content kept, and it was pushed off on our LNI commissioner. And the people in this room, most of them who don't speak English very well, did not know what happened and they left applauding and clapping. Now that's my perspective. We're talking about working together. That's the only choice that there is left, and I hope it's a productive one. Because at the end of the day, I do think that it is better for us to look forward, how we can work together positively. We have some sharp differences, but we should try to come together for the good of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Greeley. Yes. Mr. President, thank you. Listen, I don't want to keep this debate going. I think we all know where we're going here. But I have to say, I, you know, with all due respect to Councilman O, I take great disagreement to say that there was uh, that that amendment basically meant nothing. Uh, I think it was significant. Again, I'll repeat: if I if it was all up to me, I would have taken that whole section out. Other people had difference of opinion. We did spend an hour meticulously going over that, uh, that wording. 
we can all have a little, we could change words all over the place, but I, I, I firmly believe that there's a huge difference between saying something is supposed to come out right away and saying uh, that we're going to take as much as three years to try to promote regulations for the use or removal. Use or removal. I think I'm smart enough to know the difference. That's a big difference between saying remove me room the glass. And I'm not trying to get upset up here, but I don't think we should uh, miscast work that this committee did to try to work this, this situation out. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I too want to lend my voice in uh, hailing the historic work of Councilwoman Janie Blackwell and Councilwoman Cindy Bass's uh, efforts to, to move us forward on this issue. Um, I want to state, Mr. President, that when we just finished a debate last year relative to revenue generation in this city, and during that time it was about the beverage tax, we heard an argument about the overwhelming impact that this tax was going to have on low-income communities. And during that time, some may remember that I became visibly frustrated and angered, and I said, every time we're talking about a low-income community or wherever people live where there's a lower socioeconomic status, we are talking about them as if they are consumers. We are never talking about them from the perspective of why don't they own the neighborhood corner stores in the neighborhoods that they live in. With that being said, I too want to note for the record that if we allow the opportunity to re sort of encourage and re educate people in our neighborhoods about the importance of accessing ownership and control of land and businesses in their community so that they can begin to do what was done when many of these neighborhoods were in much better shape than they are now, years ago. It's my hope that we will look at existing city resources. Councilwoman Kenona Sanchez, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about commerce, when you uh, talked about PIDC. We need to make sure we're using the Community College of Philadelphia's Power Up program that is free and any resident in the city of Philadelphia who is interested in owning a business, if they have one, if they want to start one, they can get those services for free right now. In addition to that, I want to close and just note that this is about the dignity of a consumer. Because I don't care what the socioeconomic status is in the neighborhoods where the people who live, who patronize these stores are, let me dare say this. We live in a capitalistic society. And listen, if it didn't make dollars, it wouldn't make good economic sense to be there for an individual to own a business or either a resident to patronize a business. So now, let's hope that citizens in these very neighborhoods where there are high concentration of these types of stores, let's hope that we are directing resources and information to them so that they're beginning to think about how can we, who live here, own the corner store in the neighborhood that we keep alive through our tax dollars. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair again recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I will just say that, uh, Councilman Greenlee, you and I will disagree. I respect your perspective, but I can read, and I am an attorney, and I do have my own opinion. Uh, so we'll just disagree on that fact. Um, I will also say that um, many of the store owners do live in the community 
And if they are, in fact, running a business that is uh, poorly managed or, or hurtful, then they should be closed. And, and, that's, and that has been my point. Um, the, vo the vote we're going to take has to do with just the issue of whether or not the safety glass will stay up or come down. And um, the council members have, I believe at this point in time, all come to a conclusion. But I do see, as was said by many people, um, particularly in support of Councilman Bass's uh, bill, that there is misunderstanding. Uh, I would like to point out that many of the people who own businesses uh, have no other employment opportunities. They don't have a retirement plan. And the businesses are oftentimes barely profitable, if profitable. Yeah, so it's, you can open one. Go ahead. You can open one, get your money together, go open one and work yeah, the hours. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, you'll make all that yeah, money not having that. working those hours. So it's, uh, it's easy to look at others and imagine that their life is easier and better. And for that resentment that you have, you will like to take down sure, sure, count, count. their protective on, measures. Let, let people talk. So, uh, so that's, that's for you to find out. What, yeah, what, what I will say is that when I hear people say things that I believe is one of the basis for their frustration, that I would say that, it's, that it is not correct. That the businesses that barely make any money, they generally have one or two people working in stores, usually a family member. And the businesses that can hire, do hire. And not every store that it is Asian owned uh, has the name Garden Dragon or Chains. There are many Asian owned businesses that hire many people in the community. They don't have a name that you would recognize as Asian because they, have, they were born in America, they're successful. Those resources are put into the community, those jobs are created. And in that process, I think it is important that we do get to know each other. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> Councilman Tottenberger. Thank you very much. I just want to reiterate what Councilman Greenlee said. I was there as well. We worked very hard on a compromise. Very, 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 very hard. And continued use or removal, the word continued use, was never in the original bill. It is now because the committee worked together. And I'm going to have to be very blunt about this. Continued misinformation that Councilman O has given does neither side any good. I thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Chair, recognize Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order and uh, point of order if we could call this uh, bill and order it itself for a vote, please. Call to the question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Title has been read <clears throat> on bill number 170963. Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I forgot what I was supposed to say. It's been so long. Uh, this bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, now I'll call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Greenlee. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilman O. No. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Gunnarina Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. No. Councilman Tottenberger. Aye. 